Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and today we have a brand new game to bring to the channel. But before that, as always, please consider dropping a like, dropping a dislike if you don't like what we have to say, a comment. We'd love to hear what you have to say, though. And consider a subscription because we have fun games like this each and every week. But Matt, take us away. What is this brand new game? I love Metacritic scores. Metacritic scores are how I discover movies. They've always been how I discover movies. I check Metacritic every single week to be like, okay, what's good, what's mediocre, what's bad? I'm always up to date on this. One of my favorite things is predicting Metacritic scores because it can be all over the place. So what we're going to do here is we're going to predict Metacritic scores for every wide release coming out for the rest of the summer. We're going to be looking at some other films as comparisons and giving an over, under, and guessing a score for the movie, kind of where we think it's going to land. So if you like what you see, definitely drop a subscription. We're going to be doing more of this through the year. Uh, and let's start off with the movie that's coming out next week, No Hard Feelings, the Jennifer Lawrence comedy. So for the over, under here, what I did was I averaged out 10 other raunchy comedies that have come out in the last 10 years. Uh, I selected them kind of at random, kind of based on like a little bit of what this movie looks like to me, and the average that I got there was 72. That's a little bit higher because Booksmart was in the 10, which got an 84, uh, but for the most part, it might be a little bit lower if you swapped out Booksmart for something else. I'm personally going to say I think it goes under 72. I'm going to guess a funny number here. I'm going to say this is a 69. You know, that would be very fitting and very nice. And I guess to say, Matt, he loves Metacritic. I know nothing about Metacritic, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. But just my feeling is there's an advanced screening that happened of this the other day that people in the general audience saw, and it's getting raves. People love it. I know that's not what Metacritic is exactly, but if those people loving it, maybe reviewers like it too. And if they had the, like, the boldness to put out uh, the movie early, maybe that means there's good faith in it. So I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go one over. Give me 73. Mm. 73 is a good bet. My reason for putting it at 69 here is because Blockers got a 68, and this feels like Blockers to me. Fair enough. I mean, but that I mean, said... It does ring. That said, it also feels like Trainwreck, and Trainwreck got a 75. So maybe... I, I think it's just in this range. Like, think mm -hmm. 68 to 78 is like where it's going to be it's going to land somewhere in there i can't see it much lower i can't see it higher um all right next one up indiana jones and the dial of destiny we already have a metacritic score for this but not every critic has seen it we only have 27 reviews of it on here and it is currently out of 54 so my question here is do we think it's going to go up when more critics see it do we think it's going to stay the same or drop Personally, I think it's going to go slightly up. I think can critics are maybe a little bit more harsh on the film than general critics will be. So I think this is going to end with a 57. So about how many critics in total does like a film normally get? Of this one only has it in the oh, 20s well, right let's, now. Let's let's see how many the Flash had this week or Elemental. Let's try Elemental. Um, Elemental was seen by 40 critics. So 40 in total. Okay, so that means that means there's only about 10 to 15 more numbers that are going to be thrown in here. Because originally I was oh, going to say, Flash, yeah. The Flash was seen by 53 critics. Yeah, okay. Hmm. See, I was going to go be up by like 10, but I don't know if enough people can no. raise it that high. Because what I've been hearing, though, is people who have seen this movie since can I like it a lot more than the people who saw that cans. I was like, okay, if we get some 70s in here, we can raise the score up a little mm -hmm. bit. But I don't think we're going to get that high with only 10 to 15 new reviewers. So I think your 57s right, but to be different, I'll go with a 58. But we both say that it's going to go a little bit higher, so that's good too. Now let's move on to Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. And the score that we're basing on here is based on a, uh, a uh, an average of the last two DreamWorks movies, The Bad Guys and Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. So that means the over-under here is 67. I'm going to say slightly under. This feels like a 65 to me. I'm, I'm going down 50. 50. Wow. Uh, do you not have faith in, in Ruby Gilman? Uh, in terms of making money, not at all. In terms <laughs> of uh, yeah. people liking it. 
not really, but clearly I'm I'm not the the Metacritic expert because if you were to ask me some scores from some movies I've looked at here so far, I would assume they've been way higher. So you know, if Elemental got a 59, I don't see how it could go above that. So I'm dropping like nine below. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. I just feel like this is going to be a dud across the board. I don't see it being worse than the bad guys though, but maybe that's coming from me not liking I, the bad guys at bad all. Guys is but good. the bad guys got a 64. <laughs> And I think The Bad Guys is a 4 out of 10, personally. So Insidious, The Red Door, averaging out all the films in this series, you have a, a low of 40 in the Insidious saga, and you have a high of 52. So the over-under here is 48, based on all of those movies. And I'm going to say it's under 48. I don't see this performing very well. I could see this being a red Metacritic score, but I'm going to personally go 42. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it for the first time the other day, and it does not look good. Um, but at least looking at some of these other scores, I mean, the original one got a 52. Chapter 2 drops all the way to a 40. But the last one that came out, the last key, which at least people who I know really didn't like that, that had a 49. So I guess I'll put this around there. I mean, I guess our average is 48. So I'm going to go still under, but above you. I'll go a 45. But I'm, That's a not, great I'm not very confident. I'm just looking at these numbers here, and they've been on, like closer to 50. There's just one that's really bringing it down. Yeah. So next one to talk about is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. The over-under we're going here is 78. Uh, because let's just look at the modern era of Mission Impossible. The Tom Cruise is a lunatic era, uh, which starts in 2011 with Ghost Protocol. Got a 71 Rogue Nation got a 73, but then Fallout got an 86. I don't see this being as big of a thing as Fallout was, um, but I also see it being an improvement from Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation. I'm going to say this is an 81. See, to me, I feel like this could hit that Fallout thing. What I think will hold it back a little bit is that it's a part one, so there's a chance that this story does not feel finished at the end. Didn't hold back Spider-Verse. Yeah, but you could say Spider Verse would be higher because Spider Verse is in the nineties. It's in the it's in the high eighties. Yeah, that's fair enough. So what's what's your number here? You know, you know, I'm gonna go. It, it's repeating the last one. Eighty six. Eighty six. Wow. Wowza. Bold. Bold. That is bold. Okay. Oppenheimer is the next one, and here's Ooh. where I'm going to get controversial. So the over-under, we're just taking the last 10 years of Christopher Nolan, which is Dunkirk, which had a 95, Tenet, which had a 69, nice. and uh, Interstellar, which had a 74. Uh, so the over-under of the average of those three movies is 79. I'm going to say under. I have this at a 72, and I think when it gets a 72 on Metacritic, the internet's going to have a meltdown. What was Interstellar's again? 74. 74. Ugh. Hmm. That's, that's interesting because I think this is a best picture player, but it can't hit that interstellar, that tenant range if it's being a best picture player. So you know what? If our line is 79. I'll say it hits the line. 79. 79. Nice. Yeah, and that I don't have it as a best picture contender, which is, and the reason I don't is because I see it getting a 72. Yeah. Like, low 70s and that doesn't feel like enough to get a three-hour biopic into best picture so 72 now another controversial one we're going to talk about here barbie the over under for this is ridiculous <laughs> i'm gonna say because if we're looking at uh the average between greta gerwig's past two movies Lady Bird had a 93 little women had a 91 so the over under here of the average of greta gerwig's films is 92 it's a clear under a clear under but i'm gonna make an even more bold statement i think that this is going to be critically mixed um i think that this is going to get a yellow metacritic score so i'm gonna put it at a 58 see i am not gonna go that low i'm gonna put it at an 80 uh i know lego movie isn't a great comparable but hey toy that we know made into a movie that we think is fun and engaging lego movie got around an 80 it was a little bit higher so i'm shaving a few points off and put it here at an 80 but you know i don't think you're that crazy i think there's a chance where this can go super low but i don't see a chance for this to go super super high cue everyone going to the comments and yelling at me about uh, expecting barbie to not perform very well um yeah so no, that's it you know what? I'm adjusting it to keep the meme going. Uh, Barbie, 780. It's a 79. I want it to be the same as Oppenheimer. 
Oppenheimer, keep the meme going. Yeah, I think my my big bold prediction is I think that there will only be losers in the Barbenheimer war. I think the I like big that. winner is going to be Mission Impossible. I, I don't think Barbie or Oppenheimer will really win the battle between them. I think they're both going to underperform a little bit. And I'm going to be sad about that because I'm excited for both films. Next, though, let's talk about a film that we can't be surprised at underperforming. This is Haunted Mansion. Nice. Uh, we're going to take Jungle Cruise as the over-under here. That got a 50 on Metacritic. I'm going to go over that. I'm going to say this is a 52. I was trying to look at how long this movie is because I feel like the runtime could play a part in this. And and finding that, I see that the budget is one hundred fifty seven point eight million dollars. That is a yikes. Um, I guess you got to pay Jared Leto to be a ghost, but um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be higher. I think Jungle Cruise was a pretty bad movie, and everyone kind of agreed. And I think the trailer for Haunted Mansion looks pretty good, and it won't have the stakes of like, oh, it's The Rock. Uh, the Rock movie right. has to sell, and this one, and I think this one could be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go with a sixty. Nice. That makes that makes sense to me. I'm cool with that prediction. So, a little bit of a fun one here. Meg two, the trench, the new shark movie. The first one got a forty six on Metacritic. So we're gonna stick with that as our over under. I say over. I think that this film is more promising. It looks like it knows what it is. It looks like it knows that it's silly and stupid. Uh, and the director is Ben Wheatley. Ben Wheatley did some very very fun action movies he did free fire he did a field in england high rise um as well as the rebecca movie which i think is his one movie that is just not very fun at all so i'm gonna go over 46 i'm gonna put this at a 54 i am going under i think the first movie also knew what it was and clearly they didn't weren't very responsive to that and i've heard from i guess twitter accounts and reddit accounts that are in the industry that the test screens for this have been bad so i'm going with a 40 oh man that's i'm gonna choose not to trust the test screenings on this fair enough so next up one that i know we're both very excited for tmnt mutant mayhem it's from the same team as mitchell's versus the machine so let's go with that 81 is the over under going slightly under with that uh, and saying 75 but if we're talking previous teenage mutant ninja turtle movies way over way way over what those ones scored because what what did the past teenage mutant ninja turtles get probably not good (laughs) so the last teenage mutant ninja turtles movie got 40 Oh my god, it got a 40, and the one before that got a 31. Um, That's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, if we're looking at 31 and 40 as the previous, this is going so high over it, uh, because I'm going to put it at a 75. I know when we were talking about the over-unders that we're setting here, we mentioned Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which, you know, similar animation style and like that. And that only got a 73, which really surprises me due to the praise that it was getting in a lot of places. So, you know what? I'm just going to say the same thing, but a little bit lower. I'm going to go a 70 with this one. Nice. Nice. That's a good, good, easy one right there. So we're both under Mitchell's versus the Machines, but over Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But for the next one, Gran Turismo. <laughs> This is a funny one. This is directed by Neil Blomkamp. Neil Blomkamp, he once, what a fall from grace. He made District 9, which got a Best Picture nomination, had an 81 Metacritic score, and it's all been downhill from there. Uh, So we're averaging out all of his movies. He's District 9, 81, Elysium, 61, Chappie, 48, and... Uh, I can't remember the last one that he did, but he did a horror movie and it got a red Metacritic score. Nice. So the over under here is 48. I'm going to say under on this. I think that this is going to underperform 48. I'm going to give it a 47. You know, this, I have nothing to go off of here, but the trailer, it, it kind of actually looks fun. I saw it. I know we joked about it once on the show before, but I actually watched the trailer and it looks, it looks kind of good. So I'm going to say over 55. 55. Good bet. Now, horror movie for august last voyage of the demeter uh let's go off of renfield the other dracula movie that released this year which got a 53 on metacritic i haven't seen the trailer for this one i don't i know it's more serious than renfield was but i'm gonna go under renfield i'm gonna say this gets a 51 
I don't know what to think about this movie because the trailer does not make it seem like it's a Dracula movie until, boom, Dracula's there. Um, it just seems like a shipwreck movie. So I don't really know where to go. And if Renfield got a 53, which that seemed like it's pretty critically panned, but a 53 is kind of good. Um, uh, you know what? What did I give Insidious before? Insidious, I gave a nice, juicy 45 to, let's say... This is a forty-eight. I don't know. The trailer looks kind of. The trailer looks kind of good, but I. It looks. It doesn't look like it should be a Dracula movie. It's just Dracula's roped into it because they need to sell a name. But another company that's going all in on their properties, DC Warner Brothers, is releasing Blue Beetle. Uh, now the over under we're going with here is fifty-four because we're going Shazam seventy-one, uh, Shazam two at 47 black adam at 41 and the flash at 58 so the over under is 54 i'm gonna say blue beetle slightly under 53 well i i haven't given a red yet let's give a red here 38 38 Ooh, that would be that'd be a killer for this, this new dc property i'll take the hate of people you know if you made it this far you can drop a comment down below you can give us a thumbs down here this movie looks awful and i know there's people out there who say this looks great this looks this trailer is i think my least favorite trailer i've seen in years and a black adam got a 41 i don't see this being about black adam okay yeah that that makes a lot of sense to me i haven't seen the trailer for this i haven't gone out of my way to watch you're it lucky. you're lucky but it plays um, in front of every i probably movie. I haven't seen it in front of any movies. That's so weird that, like, I like I have not come in contact with this trailer, and I've gone to see a ton of movies. Next up, Strays. This is from the team behind Good Boys, which got a 60 on Metacritic. So our over-under here is 60, and I'm going to say under. Let's go 55. See, I felt like there was good buzz around this movie, and then Universal kind of randomly out of the blue said, we're pushing this, and it got delayed by, like, a whole month and a half. Like, like less than a month or so before it's released. So to me, that reads that this movie might not be good. So of Good Boys, a movie that I thought was funny, but I can understand why people didn't love it, got a 60. I'm going to drop this one a little bit lower and give it a 43. Ooh, that's a lot lower too. But yeah, I can see this being a massive uh, misfire, I guess. And you're right, the studio strategy might be telling. Next up though... <sighs> Speaking of delays. I, I Speaking of delays, we've got White Bird, formerly known as White Bird, A Wonder Story. Uh, this is a Holocaust movie set in the universe of the Jacob Tremblay movie Wonder. Uh, now, Wonder got 66 on Metacritic, so I'm going to go so far under that. I think this is going to be a red. I think this is going to be known as one of the biggest misfires of the year. I'm going to give it a 24. 24 is big low. Um... Oh, on top of just the premise is a head scratcher. This movie's been delayed for about like two years, it feels like. So that clearly speaks about their faith in this movie's ability. So I'm also going to go red. I'm going with a 36. That's a little bit stronger than where I am, but I think that this is going to be seen as one of the worst movies of the year. I think this might be a Razzie contender. Okay, um, yeah. So I could see that really, really uh, being not very good. Now, The Equalizer 3. So... The Equalizer 3, this is our last one. Uh, we're doing an over-under of 53 here because the first one got like... Mid? 57. I don't know. 57. And the second one got lower than that. So 50. There we go. So 53 is our midpoint here. I'm going under. I think this is going to continue the downward trajectory. I'm going to give it a 46. See, you should have done for the jokes and made it a 43 because that's 777. Um, I don't uh, know what to yeah. go here. I also do agree that this is going to go down from the last one. But at the same time, why are they making these movies again if they're just going to keep getting worse? But we talked about this in our box office one. Because they movies, still make money. They stay consistent. They made the first one. The second one made the exact same amount of money. I think it's like a $3 million difference. So with that being said, we have a 57. We have a 50. Let's drop it down. Buy seven more. Give me that good old 43. So I guess what we're predicting here is not a very good summer for the movies. Because <laughs> well, clearly thing after thing has just been yellow, 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 yellow. Ugh. Do we even have a green? <laughs> yes. Um, Mission Impossible. We do. Mission Impossible. Oppenheimer, we both agree. Uh, TMNT, we both agree, is going to be green. Um, we don't agree on Barbie. We're almost in agreement. Um, 
Ooh, yeah, gross. everything else. Oh, no hard feelings we have in a green. Oh, yeah. God, that is not a good-looking summer. Well, that just stays in line, because if you uh, remember that little summer box office prediction video that we did where we gave our top ten, you know, a lot of things are underperforming. I said, like, oh, I think this summer is going to be great. And you know what? It is doing great on paper until you look at budgets, and budgets have been a big problem. And I think there's just too much out at the moment, and it's really cannibalizing itself. I know that doesn't really play a part in the critic score, but, you know, we're looking at a lot of stuff that probably could be spaced out a little bit, so we don't have so many duds in a row. Yeah, I, I feel like some of these movies could really surprise us. And some of them I'm just like, yeah, I, I White Bird, there's no way that movie's good. There's no way it's anything less than horribly offensive. Yeah, I'm, I, you know what, I'm curiously excited to see it, to see why has this movie been pushed for so long? Yeah, should we review that on the show? <laughs> you know what, that's why you gotta drop a subscription, because then you'll find out if we do review white bird but until next time drop a comment down below let us know some of your bold predictions obviously you don't have to do every movie like we did but like pick a few pick one that you think is higher one that you think is lower and one that you think is you know right at the right spot thank you so much for watching as always my name is matt and my name is dill and this is fancy film ball